Hi there, I'm um, Stephen Lipscomb. I'm an orthopaedic hand and wrist surgeon. I'm based in uh, Cheshire. Um, that's uh, an excellent first question because no one honestly is certain what causes Dupuytren's disease. Um, there are a couple of uh, theories. Uh, essentially what's happening is that the fibrous tissue that exists normally within the body um, becomes thickened. So in the palm, uh, people notice uh, lumps in the palm. Um, the, the reason for them to develop this way, uh, it's thought that there, there, there's maybe an ex, external cause. Um, so a virus has been proposed, but nothing confirmed, um, or an intrinsic problem with the tissue itself. Um, so certainly one thing we do know with Dupuytren's disease is that there does seem to be a genetic element that um, so some people are, uh, within families seem more susceptible to developing Dupuytren's disease. Uh, the old story is that uh, this has been inherited through the Vikings, although uh, a very recent paper uh, suggests this isn't the case, um, but still interesting. So the... Uh, the, the initial presentation tends to be with a, uh, a lump in the palm, which obviously uh, is, is quite alarming for patients that no one likes to find a lump anywhere. Um, it, sometimes it can be a bit tender. Um, then the lumps can uh, progress somewhat. So they uh, develop further along the line of the finger uh, with some skin pitting. Uh, and then for some patients, the finger can actually start to curl in. This, this typically affects the, the ring or the little finger, but it can affect multiple digits and sometimes both hands. Um, can it be slowed or stopped? Um, there's um, people, people feel that if they wear a splint, it will stop the finger curling in. Uh, there's very little evidence to support that, unfortunately. Uh, there are a few centres in, uh, in the UK which provide a, uh, a course of radiotherapy to nodules, which uh, does show some evidence of um, stopping the progression of the disease, but the evidence, again, is, is somewhat limited. Uh, very, very recently in the news um, uh, was the use of a, a rheumatoid uh, medication, which uh, again is thought to uh, slow the progress of the disease, but obviously much further research and work is um, required to, uh, to look into that. Uh, it's important to note that sometimes the disease just doesn't progress. Uh, my own dad has got a, a lump in his palm that he's been watching for you know 15 years or so and it hasn't really progressed, so it's, it's not inevitable that it will progress. But uh... Yeah, so um, as, as I already touched um, upon the, you know, the use of radiotherapy, of course, of radiotherapy or the, the perhaps hopefully the newer medication um, in the form of the rheumatoid uh, drugs. Um, sometimes a steroid injection can be useful into the area of the nodule because sometimes the nodule become um, adherent to the underlying tendon and that causes pain. Um, uh, the, the other treatment that was um, available up until recently in this country was, uh, was the enzyme collagenase that can be injected into the, uh, into the cord. Um, uh, there were some problems with the, with the licensing for this drug, but um, I believe there are some companies in the UK and Europe trying to develop their own drugs. The drug was originally from America, um, but we, again, we have to wait to see um, whether that becomes more widely available to the UK population. Um, this is probably the most important question, in, in my opinion, with regard to Dupuytren's disease, because timing is everything. Um, so unfortunately, it's, it's important to realise that there is nothing curative for Dupuytren's disease. Um, so treatment options really are directed at trying to improve the position of the finger, accepting always that there, uh, there is the potential for recurrence. Uh, and that can, that can happen um, within the first 12 months. It can be, um, it can be years later. Um, uh, so uh, the, the, the question really can be turned back to the patient to say, well, is it causing a functional problem? Um, and many patients will tell me that the finger is awkward, it catches on clothes, it catches on their face, um, the finger goes up the nose when they're trying to wash the face, um, it can interfere with the keyboard as well because it reduces the, um, the finger span um, and it um, uh, also makes a handshake somewhat awkward. Um, if, if that is all, you know, if, if, if those conditions exist and there is a, um, a noticeable contraction in the finger, um, surgical options are certainly, uh, can certainly be considered. Uh, so the, the surgical treatments can, can certainly be very useful. Um, so almost, almost on all occasions, the finger 
uh, contracture can be corrected so that the finger is straight and the, and the patient regains a full range of movement in the, in the finger. Uh, sometimes, however, um, because the contracture has been present for a while, um, the, even, even with uh, release or excision of the uh, diseased tissue, the finger doesn't, doesn't go fully straight or it, it wants to coil back in very quickly because of the other soft tissue. So there is a period of hand therapy uh, required after most surgical uh, treatments for Dupuytren's disease. Generally, again, um, most of the results are very good, but um, uh, this is always against the background of the prospect of recurrence. Um, another common question regarding surgical procedure with Dupuytren's disease is removing the nodules. Um, generally, this is something I would advise against in the palm, just because, um, again, it's certainly not incurative. It doesn't seem to alter the course of the disease, and you're putting yourself through a surgical procedure uh, which, um, you know, in my, in my opinion, doesn't yield the, the result that, um, that people are looking for. 